Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. My name is Daniel and I'm the High Mileage Helper. On this channel, my goal is to be able to help you learn more about the RV transporting industry, as well as give how-to videos for your truck and then give recommendations along the way. So this is our first time meeting. Uh, just consider subscribing, uh, hitting the like button if you get good value. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my fuel tank setup in my bed and we'll go ahead and get right into the video. All right, guys, so I did just want to start off uh, by sharing with you kind of my history with fuel tanks uh, in my truck and uh, kind of get you up to speed on where I'm at, uh, what I'm doing, how I have things set up. So to start my first year, year and a half, maybe even two years, uh, I did not even own a fuel tank. I thought, man, it's not worth it. Uh, it's too much money. It's not worth the, the hassle. It's not worth uh, spending all that money. I'm not going to get that money back in return. I can't afford to do this. And I finally decided, you know what, it's actually the opposite i can't afford not to have a fuel tank uh, the savings and all these other things uh, i did already just post a video uh, covering those things why you should buy an auxiliary fuel tank so go ahead and check that video out if you have not already uh, explaining why i did and really why you should and all the benefits of having an auxiliary fuel tank uh, but for me uh, i just wasn't in that space yet and so finally i decided you know what i've got to just break down and get this tank and so i started off with a 90 gallon uh, auxiliary fuel tank with a toolbox on top combo uh, I did have a pump to be able to pump with a regular handle came with some hoses uh, I bought that for around $500 something like that not too bad off of Craigslist I believe and that lasted for a decent while uh, eventually it got a seam line crack uh, in the welds and it was not a good weld uh, and I ended up losing some fuel and so that was a tough lesson to learn uh, getting a fuel tank that is not made well uh, not good welds and uh, not quality and so after that I went online and decided to look for a larger fuel tank I went from a 90 gallon uh, and I eventually found a 116 uh, gallon fuel tank uh, from someone off of I believe it was Craigslist again and uh, this person was down in Missouri so I found a load going down to Missouri and I was able to scoop up this uh, fuel tank that I now have put it in my bed and uh, brought it home got it all taken care of uh, I think I eventually brought it up to uh, Dooley Depot at that time but uh, this fuel tank that I have now is a 116 this tank does meet the DOT requirements uh, it does have the little placard for it uh, to be able to show that it is certified to be able to be on the road commercially uh, I would advise you if you are going to be getting a an auxiliary fuel tank uh, that you don't just buy any old tank that you get a DOT regulated tank so that you can avoid any issues you might have at a DOT way station uh, I've never personally seen anyone who's gotten in trouble with a non-DOT tank, uh, but uh, there's always the risk of this being an issue. So I would just urge you to get a DOT tank uh, and be able to have peace of mind uh, when you are going down the road, going into way stations, that it is a tank that is meeting the requirements uh, for DOT. So real briefly, uh, I know everybody has their own opinions, their own ideas, uh, but I do just want to share with you what I do uh, with my additives in my fuel system, uh, in my fuel tank, and I uh, wanted to share that with you and uh, just give you the option just just to throw it out there um, so I will go ahead and show you what I use all right guys so you see the three products in front of you here uh, we've got the power service clear diesel uh, we've got the diesel extreme uh, from hot shot secret and then the lucas uh, upper cylinder lubricant with the injector cleaners and uh, fuel conditioners uh, these three products of what i've been using uh, for some time now uh, the only one that i have not is the uh, hot shot uh, diesel extreme uh, i first have been using uh, basically all lucas products i've just seen uh, an uptick in fuel economy i've seen uh, just in overall lubrication the sound uh, when i put lucas in, you know as an oil additive uh, for the fuel additive as well uh, it just gives me peace of mind they've got all the research all the data to be able to back up their products so uh, i've been buying lucas for the fuel for my diesel uh, for basically the entire time i've been driving uh, it's only recently that i've been starting uh, just just a couple times now starting to use the diesel extreme with the concentrated fuel injector cleaner and the cetane booster this is just something i'm trying out um, i'm not you know gonna endorse it or you know give my full whatever on it uh, this is just something i've been trying out i did notice 
uh, the last two trips that I have had uh, higher fuel economy. I don't know if that's because of wind uh, or if this is a new normal for me. Uh, we'll kind of see as that goes and maybe I'll do an update video later on. Uh, but I have noticed a difference uh, since using uh, this new Hot Shot Secret uh, Diesel Extreme. And so lastly, the, the clear diesel, the fuel and tank cleaner. Um, my buddy actually told me about this and uh, this is something that's uh, really not maybe for performance, but more of a you know utility, cleaning things up, and uh, making sure things are not going to get you know slimy and nasty uh, in these tanks. You know, from time to time we do have some you know diesel uh, spills, and uh, right at the the opening here it can kind of get kind of nasty down in here. And my buddy actually tried this out uh, quite a while ago, and he accidentally poured some just around here where he had a whole bunch of you know diesel fuel stains. It was darker, kind of blacked out, and uh, it actually just in the time from him spilling it over uh, this whole area, uh, it just got completely cleaned off just just by it kind of caking the whole thing. So and so he seemed to like that and uh, like the results of that. And so he told me about that, and uh, I've been using it ever since as well. Every once in a while, maybe every one. Maybe one out of you know four or five uh, you know full tanks of this 116 gallons. Uh, this does treat about 100 gallons. So I figure you know putting this uh, when this is you know almost full uh, is going to be pretty good, and it'll be able to clean this out. Uh, it does also uh, share that it does not. Uh, you know get things clogged up. It's not going to clog up your system It's not going to harm your injectors when the fuel does go down the road It's able to clean this uh, while the fuels in it as everything's running as it's going through the full fuel system without gumming anything up So uh, I've been using this every once in a while. This is just kind of a maintenance thing for me You can do with that uh, as you please but uh, these are the three things that I've been using uh, for my fuel system and uh, I will go ahead and go on to the next thing all right guys so i did have that old fuel tank uh you know end up dying on me and basically losing fuel uh in the bed and so what i wanted to do as a preventative if it's even a possibility to prevent uh any issues like this uh happening again with a with a weld going bad uh, i wanted to find a way to kind of distance the tank from the actual bed you know metal on metal rubbing uh or flexing when you do put 100 plus gallons into a tank you know eventually something's going to to move and shift and maybe that contributes to the welds uh, slowly losing their strength uh, so what I did was I went to tractor supply uh, I got a one inch horse mat and so I cut that horse mat uh, to be able to go underneath my auxiliary fuel tank to match the whole frame of it it's not the best job I think I was just using like a box cutter and it took forever but uh, ended up getting this placed underneath my fuel tank uh, and then I had I believe Dooley Depot uh, with the one inch you know raised mat underneath the fuel tank they were able to still bolt it down and get it secure and so and so I have a one inch you know horse stall uh, rubber mat uh, basically very very thick uh, but it can absorb maybe some of the, the pressure uh, and some of those issues. So I have that underneath my fuel tank. So I'll go ahead and show that to you right now. All right, guys. So there is the one inch horse mat uh, that I do have underneath uh, the auxiliary fuel tank. But basically they were able to extend uh, the bolts and everything to be able to still be level and even and uh, secure this entire fuel tank to the bed uh, so that nothing goes wrong, nothing shifts. Uh, nothing goes bad so uh, I would just encourage you to maybe do this or, or maybe you have a better option than this uh, let us know down in the comments below but uh, this is what I came up with hopefully to be a preventative to any welds going bad in the future uh, or maybe prolonging the welds from going bad eventually someday so this is another part of my setup uh, for my auxiliary fuel tank all right guys, so we're now looking down in between the rail and the auxiliary fuel tank on the side here. I've got my fuel filter, as you can see there. I've got a Wix filter. I believe that's down to two micron. Uh, that's a 33339 uh, fuel filter. That's the, uh, the sizing for that. And then as you can see a little further back there, uh, possibly, uh, that is the actual fuel pump that came with it. I believe that's the original fuel pump uh, that this person that I bought it from uh, got from Dooley Depot. Uh, it has lasted for years now. I don't know how many hours it's actually been uh, on there, but it is it has performed very well. Uh, no issues whatsoever so far. I do end up changing out the uh, fuel filter uh, every, I don't know, 20, 25,000 miles maybe uh, on that filter. And so, and so that's just an additional fuel filter that I talked about in that previous video uh, about having a little bit more peace of mind, having an additional 
filter uh, to maybe you know catch some type of contamination uh, some type of issue when you do have an additional you know 100 plus gallons or, or whatever your fuel tank is uh, this is kind of my setup that I have with that Wix uh, fuel filter all right guys so this is the last piece of the puzzle uh, that I have for my auxiliary fuel tank setup uh, this is the switch that goes to that pump that we just saw a second ago. Uh, this switch is off of the ignition, so uh, if the truck is not on, this pump cannot operate, which means you know I don't lose my battery life. Uh, I also don't overflow or have any issues like that. Uh, so I have to be able to turn on the truck, which I'll do now. At least have it on the uh, you know run position uh, to have auxiliary power, and then I can actually flip the switch and then I will have uh, the pump run in the background here. And you can just kind of turn it on. I don't know if you can hear that. Let me turn off my... I don't know if you can hear that or not. But uh, it kind of kicks on there. Even though the truck's not on, it's still got you know quite a bit of voltage going to it. Uh, not the full voltage, but I can turn that on or off. Uh, my light ended up dying on here, so it, it actually does come on if, if you can't hear that. It does still work, and uh, that is the last part of my, my fuel tank setup. You know, this auxiliary fuel tank setup has just been uh, something that has saved me so much money over the years. Uh, it's probably saved me thousands of dollars, probably well over five, maybe even ten. Who knows, you know, the long-term effects of it. But, uh, you know, what could have been, what I could have had to have paid uh, at certain, you know, fill-ups if I did not have this. And so this is my auxiliary fuel tank setup uh, that I use. These are the additives that I use. All right, guys. So this is my auxiliary fuel tank setup. Uh, this is the you know the additives that I'm using, the the different things, the different quirky things that I've done. Uh, you know, with the horse mat, I've got my switch in the cab there, and I've just, just had to learn these hard lessons along the way. Uh, and, and the truth is, there's there's other guys out there who run different setups, and I'm sure they it's doing well for them and it's doing great. And uh, we're all learning. We're all in this process of learning new things, and so I'm definitely doing that. You know, trying out the hot shot uh, for the first time after. You know only using lucas this whole time and so just trying to experiment and see what works what doesn't uh maybe you've got something that works let me know down in the comments below what's been working well for you you know how many total gallons of fuel do you have on board ready to go uh if you filled up all the way and i uh, just want to share this with you you know i haven't actually talked about this stuff uh, a little bit more in depth on this channel and so i just want to start off by sharing you know my setup uh talking about why you should get an auxiliary fuel tank and then maybe we'll go a little bit deeper into these things uh, going forward so hopefully this video is a help to you uh, giving you an idea of what someone else does what I do what I've done for for some time now uh, maybe you know some other people who do things as well ask them pick their brain uh, see what they can share with you and uh, we're all in this together you know just trying to learn and find out what works best what doesn't and so these are just some things that I've learned along the way uh, for myself that uh, this is kind of where I'm at so uh, anyways with all that being said hopefully you have a great day today stay safe and God bless, guys.